Hi, welcome back to Cheyenne, Wyoming Urban Gardener. And in light of the recent situation that has happened with Bake a Leg and Let's Dig It, um, she's a YouTube creator that I watch as well that she is gardening. And I wanted to go over some of the basic pests that you can get in a garden. Um, these are all pests that I have known about for a very long time. Um, I don't normally go through what pests there are out in the garden um, because I just like to get through gardening. So anyway, I want to go through some of the basic pests that you can encounter in your garden and maybe even a couple that you've never encountered or never even thought of. This one that you're seeing on the screen right now is a potato bug. We have these in the south when I was back in Tennessee. They would infest the potatoes quite frequently. They can completely chew up all of the leaves on potato plants very, very quickly and this is the potato bug. This is what they look like, striped, and then have little dots on their heads. And then their larva is a peachy, orangey color with little black dots along their sides and they get really fat the more that they eat. So that is what you're looking at if you're looking for um, a potato bug or something that's chewing your potato leaves. Now here's another guy that can attack your potatoes and also sunflowers um, and if you have like the Jerusalem artichoke they call it, these can attack those and these are pretty interesting little bugs. I've not really came across them very often but they're called Jerusalem crickets um, and I think some people call them mole crickets and they can chew into the tubers of the potatoes as well as decimate all the greens on them so that is something to be aware of and here is the mexican bean beetle that melody over at bake a leg and let's dig it has encountered that decimated her bean crop so that is what they look like sometimes they can be a little bit more orange looking and almost take on the characteristics of a ladybug but the larvae are yellow like that and very fuzzy or spiky if you want to call it that. So that is what the Mexican bean beetle looks like and they completely skeletonize the leaves of bean plants. I had one infestation when I was back in, in Tennessee and it very quickly went through my entire bean crop before I had a chance to even treat it because I was working a lot at that time. So if you are not going outside and checking your garden every single day and just looking underneath the leaves and things, these little things can be hiding and you just don't even know that they're there until it's too late. All right, and here is this little guy. And one of the reprieves about this little guy, which is called a tomato flea beetle, or sometimes they're called a mustard flea beetle or potato flea beetle, is that later on in the season you will get a reprieve from these but once you get an infestation I have heard that they actually lay their eggs in the soil so it's very hard to get rid of these guys but I have found out that if you powder or like take a powder cornstarch even works and powder the leaves of an affected plant that it will kill these because I've had these in the past in the south they're quite prevalent and they will decimate a crop as well and they will go after not only your tomatoes but also your mustard sometimes your lettuce sometimes your cabbages and the beans they go after a lot of different crops that they can get into and there are large numbers of those and they take on the characteristic of fleas because when you go near them and brush up against them or touch them they jump like fleas or kind of um, fly short dis distances from one leaf to another or from one branch to another so it looks like fleas so one of the things that you can do like I said is just powder you can use any type of powder cornstarch baby powder anything like that but once it rains that powder is no longer effective but what the powder does is it basically smothers them on their skin because they breathe through, your, through, through their skin and that's the tomato flea beetle all right, and this is a different type of something that you may never have encountered before, and I encountered it last season, and I got a hold of it pretty quickly, figured out what it was, and got rid of the problem. Now, the one that I encountered was actually green, 
and not this white color, which kind of looks like either a grub or a maggot. But um, this is a pea weevil, a pea leaf weevil, or sometimes called a bean weevil. And I will show you both this version and also the adult version. Um, I actually found both. Um, this one was located inside of one of my bean pods, inside of a bean. It didn't affect the other beans that were in the pod, so they were fine. But it did affect that one bean, and it burrows down inside of the bean. And when I pulled the bean out, then this guy came crawling out. So that is a bean weevil larva. The one that I encountered was actually very, very green. And let me show you the adult weevil. Kind of a scary looking guy. This is probably a microscope version or it's been blown up. I'll show you a different version here. Also looks like that, and then sometimes they do have stripes as well, and some are green. So there can be a few varieties of these, but if you see them on your bean plants, that means bad news because they actually burrow down into the pod and inside of the bean, and you will not even know it until they have eaten the entire insides of the beans out. Um, sometimes even, and all you see is just a little tiny hole into the pod itself. The adult um, weevils, I haven't seen anything with them. Um, I do think they bite the leaves because I'd seen some spots on the leaves last season. And then I saw the larva. So fortunately, I caught it pretty quickly. I did not have to use any pesticides or anything. I just killed that guy and killed the adult um, and didn't have any further issues. But that is something to be aware of. They can also decimate a crop pretty quickly. Now, almost everyone knows who, who this is, uh, especially if you live in the South, you encounter these quite a bit. These are tomato hornworms, and they are very, very large, about two, three inches, sometimes even longer. Um, thick, fat guys with green bodies and white stripes and little black dots. And then they've got that little pattern on the side and a little tail horn. So these guys can completely destroy your tomatoes and make them stop producing. Um, they are just awful to the crops. Let me show you what the adult moth looks like. And there it is. That's the tom tomato hornworm adult. So there you go. Um, also called a five-spotted hawk moth. And that will just decimate your crops. Another guy you can come across, and this one is very, very, very common, is the cabbage worm or, ca or cabbage moth. Um, and sometimes in the south we call them cutworms, but we actually have a different variety of cutworms. Anyway, the cabbage moth can also be hugely de detrimental to all of your brassicas, not just your cabbages. They also will attack kale, they will attack... Um, collards, anything in the brassica family they can attack. Broccoli, cauliflower, all of it. And what they do is they lay their eggs underneath the leaves of the plants and then the um, caterpillar hatches out and just starts attacking by eating all of the leaves on your plants, um, leaving your plant completely unable to um, continue flourishing and it will either die off or just have a lot of holes in it and you just you just don't want that situation but in my situation is that I have a few cabbage moths that do flutter around if you can keep in control of the eggs being laid which are underneath the leaves all you have to do is just flip the leaf up take a look at it see if there's any eggs under there and basically just pinch them off and destroy them then these moths are actually great pollinators for the garden because they will flutter to all the other flowers um, around the garden and pollinate from one flower to another, especially on your tomatoes. So I have a love-hate relationship with them. I tolerate them because of the pollinating. We don't have a whole lot of pollinators here in Wyoming. And so I tolerate them until they become too much. If I get too many of these guys, then I will start destroying them. 
another pest in the garden that a lot of people maybe don't think of because there's just so many of them are ants. And ants for my garden have been a little bit of an issue this season. We have a lot of ant nests out and around the garden right now. And what they do is that they are, if they get in a situation where they need water or nutrients, they will sometimes bite the leaves or stems of the plants um, to get water extracted out of them or nutrients. And then also they will cut a plant down if they feel that it's in their path and blocking them. I've had a, lost a, a pepper plant and a couple of cabbages due to ants of these particular size. They have to be the bigger ants. The little small ants, which we used to call sweet ants in the south, don't really bother those kinds of things. And the much larger carpenter ants don't really bother anything either. It's this one of a more of a, what I would consider a mid-size ant. There are larger than the sweet ants or the tiny ants that sometimes get in your house. Um, but smaller than the carpenter ants, which are really big guys. But um, these also have a nasty bite if they get on you. And the particular nest that I'm dealing with is pretty large. And the only reason I do not put out any type of pesticides for these guys is that they do carry it back to the nest. And they also carry it around the yard. And it can be detrimental to other beneficial insects that you have. So these guys can be bad. If they're in smaller numbers, the nest is small, they usually will not bother anything. And I haven't had that issue until this, this season. Now, last growing season, I did deal with this guy as well. Um, first time I've ever had any issues with any of the corn that I've grown. These are corn earworms. And what they do is that the moth, which is right here, goes and lays their eggs on an ear of corn or actually even just on the leaves of corn and then what hatches out are these guys and they burrow into the tip of the corn up where the silk is and they will eat the silk and then they will eat down into the corn just like this. So those guys very destructive for your corn crop. Um, it will not completely destroy an entire ear usually. So when you peel back and you find like a little spot like this, then what I do is I just cut everything off the top and um, or off that bottom part. If I was picking the ear of corn, I would pick every, I would cut off everything that was bad and leave the good and I would still eat that. So, just uh, something to be aware of. They can completely infest your corn crop. And um, one of the things that you can do to prevent that as well is again, cornstarch or any type of powder, just powdered onto the top of the ear will prevent those little guys from getting in because it will smother them. So that's something to be aware of. Some, a simple little trick that you can use, something that I wished I, I had used last season, but I had never had an issue with these guys and it was the first time I'd ever had to deal with them. So just something to be aware of and uh, look out for that if you have corn. And this is another guy that you should be on the lookout for and it's kind of hard to spot these because you don't know until you've already grown your potatoes and you pull them out of the ground and it's too late. But these are called wire worms, um, sometimes referred to as potato worms. They get into the tuber of the potato plants and they will eat everything inside of the potato, sometimes just even leaving just the skin. But they will completely decimate your crop and also earwigs will get down into potato tubers, especially if you do not have them buried very deeply. And they will also chew and eat your potatoes, so something to be aware of. And becoming more prevalent in this area is and also across the United States is this type of worm. And um, just be aware that this is something that can, can chew in and, and really decimate a crop. They don't always look the same. Again, this is a wire worm as well. So very difficult to spot these guys and they can definitely tear into your crop. Another guy that can actually attack your potatoes and your corn is the army worm. And they come in varying colors as well. Some of them can be a little bit more green. There's a striped variety. There's a brown variety. 
There are several different types of these, and basically what they do is, again, eat all of the leaves on plants. So that is something to keep aware of, of the army worm, because they can really decimate a crop as well. And here is a good picture of the army worm in all of the very different colors. Some green, some brown, some spikes, some red, some orange, all kinds of colors for these guys, but all of them spell bad news for potatoes and corn. And here's a guy that can spell bad news for your carrots. This is the carrot fly. And what they do is they lay their eggs and they burrow down into the carrot itself. And then this is what they do to the carrots. They just completely destroy it and they can actually go through and completely destroy your carrot crop. So that's another one you want to definitely make sure that you're checking to see that you don't have any of this going on around your plants. You can usually see them flying. If you go around your carrots and um, you see something taking off, that's usually the carrot fly. And what you can do with those is you can actually just put some mesh over your carrots and that will like a, a wire mesh or a um, some sort of textile mesh you can just place over your carrots and that will prevent the carrot fly from being able to get in and lay their eggs. Now here's another guy that a lot of gardeners don't even actually think of. This is the blowfly and they can, I've seen them on my um, potato plants before, they can actually cause brown spots on your potato uh, leaves and I think this one is actually sitting on a, sitting on a potato leaf right now but they just cause little spots all over your potato leaves and it can eventually cause your potato plants to start dying back before or prematurely. So that's another one to be aware of. As far as the blowfly is concerned, I haven't had a whole lot of them, but I have had a little bit of damage in the past from these guys and I'm not really sure of um, anything other than dirty dish water in a bottle that you would spray over the plants that will keep these guys at bay. Um, otherwise, I haven't really seen anything other than resorting to chemical pesticides to prevent these, these guys from causing damage. But um, these definitely will cause some damage to your plants. And of course, if you just look online, you can come across diagrams like this that let you know what pests that there are out there that will attack your plants. There's all sorts of other pests out there that I haven't came across as often, but there are also um, squash borers. Those burrow into the vine of squash plants and lay their eggs and their larvae will completely destroy your squash plants um, and will cause the vines to die off. There are white flies and spider mites, neither one of those I've ever had. Um, root maggots and again that looks like a blowfly as well you got slugs and snails that can completely decimate your lettuces um, a lot of people will say sow bugs or pill bugs uh, will also attack your plants but I've never had that situation happen and we have loads and loads and loads of those guys here um, so I've not had any problems with that so I I don't know what to say on that one um, I've never seen them attack crops. I've only ever seen sow bugs and pill bugs eat wood and decaying material. Um, there's leaf hoppers that will destroy your plants. Leaf miners, I've had a little bit of some leaf miner damage on my plants that I just keep a check on. And what you can do on those is that if you can find the miter, miner larva inside of the leaf, if you just pinch the leaf, you'll kill it. And they're usually not as bad as some of the other things are unless you just get a complete infestation of them. I've only had a few of them ever, so I've not really paid that much attention to doing a whole lot in regards to those. There are corn borers, earwigs, of course, I mentioned before. Those can also attack cutworms. Now, cutworms are something that I've came across a few times, and they will definitely go in and cut your leaves off your plants, sometimes cut the crop out. So that's something to be aware of. And cucumber beetles, um, one that I noticed fairly recent on a friend's video that she posted of her daughter's garden, 
and she, she was posting about this little yellow striped bug and saying, oh, it's so cute. And I said, that's a cucumber beetle. They're not cute. They're going to kill the cucumbers. So that was the one to be aware of. Um, there's asparagus beetles, which I've never had. Um, aphids, you name it. All kinds of things that can happen to a garden. So, But if you're going out every day and you're checking your garden at least 15 to 20 minutes a day, and just looking for a little evidence of these guys around, which will be either their feces hanging around or... Um, you can see little bite marks in the plants or anything like that. Make sure you get on top of it before you have an infestation because that's how it gets out of control really fast. And um, there's other beneficial insects and then there's insects that just don't do anything to a garden. They're just hanging out in it. Um, one of those things is cantaba worms. They don't really do anything. Um, they just kind of hang out in a garden. And um, also swallowtail caterpillars. They like dill. They will eat some dill. So what I do with those is I always just plant extra dill and they can have some of the dill. And I've never had an issue with them. I've had a few of them. There's never very many of them that I've seen. And I've had a few of them eat some dill and then I still have plenty of dill left over. So that's something that you can look at. They can also be beneficial to a garden because the butterflies, of course, do pollinate. So Anyway, that's just a little bit about some of the pests. I'm, I'm sure that I've missed some of them, but that's the ones that I can think of most common that I've come across. So just um, if you're new to gardening or you are just trying gardening out and maybe haven't gardened in a long time, that's some of the things that you can come across of. Um, so just be aware of that. So like, subscribe, hit the notification bell for new notices on videos as they come out, and we shall see you in the next one.